Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Canard Boulevard. Today, we are going to finally put to rest the cylinder head temperature problems that I've been having for seven months. Coming up. So if you've been following along, last winter I did a ton of work. I put a new propeller on, I put in new heating ductwork, new cooling, scat tubing in the engine compartment, and when I first test flew the airplane, my cylinder head temperatures were off the scale. I, I was seeing 430, 440. I was actually having to pull power back in the climb in order to keep my cylinder head temperatures under control. Anything over 400 is what I would consider too hot. So 430, 440, way, way out. Totally wrong. So the first thing I thought was, okay, well, I've stuffed a bunch of new stuff under the cowl. I'll take some of that out and uh, we'll see if it didn't makes any difference. Made no difference. And I thought, well, okay, it's gotta be, maybe there's not enough cooling air getting into the cylinders. So I'll go through the entire engine compartment and I'll seal up every leak for every bit of air so that all that air is being forced through the cylinders. And I found quite a bit. There was some cylinder baffling that was loose. I found some open holes where air could get past the cylinders without actually cooling them. So I did a lot of work really sealed up the engine compartment really well. I thought that, that'll fix it for sure. Went up, made no difference whatsoever. Iterative changes. The next thing I thought, okay, well, the new propeller. Maybe the new propeller isn't moving enough air. Maybe it's, uh, it, it's putting more load on the engine. There, it, it's gotta be the new pro propeller because that's the only thing left that I changed that would make any difference. So to test that, I thought, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, a manometer on either side of the cylinder, which measures air pressure. And that way I can get the differential air pressure going across the cylinder and see if it's sufficient. And the initial test I did showed it was not, I realized afterwards that one of my tubes was actually pinched and that was uh, obviously going to affect the reading. So I went up and did it again and found out that I was seeing six, seven inches of water differential where Lycoming says you need five. So I've got more than enough pressure differential going across the cylinders. So the cylinders should be getting cool. So what is going on? Then I had the video where I went to put in bay, the electronic ignition failed. And I thought, okay, it's gotta be the electronic ignition because if you have an ignition that is too far advanced, that can cause the problem. Got it back here, realized that a sensor was bad. If you've been following my channel, you saw that whole story. I replaced the sensor, flew to Florida, Cylinder head temperatures were still too hot. Did the condition inspection in Florida, and the EMP that, that was doing the engine work uh, retimed the mag, and the mag was set to 32 degrees before top dead center. It should have been 25. When it's too far advanced like that, it will cause your, your CHTs, your cylinder head temperatures, to be too high. So now, the magneto went from 32 down to 25 where it should be. It's going to be good, right? Took it off out of Florida. I put full power in, climbed out of Florida. Uh, the cylinder head temperatures were still hot. They were still 410, 415, but I didn't have to pull power back. I was able to leave full power in all the way through the climb to altitude, which is something I hadn't been able to do. So I thought, okay, the, the magneto timing was, was bad. Fixing that, retarding that timing fixed some of it. So now let's have a look at the electronic ignition. So what I did is I wired up a meter inside the cockpit so that I could monitor the actual advance that the electronic ignition is applying because it puts a signal out that you can read if you hook up a meter. I also put a switch in there that lets me turn on and off the manifold pressure sensor. If the manifold pressure sensor senses lower manifold, it will add up to 18 degrees of advance to your timing to help at lower RPM. When you open it up, that manifold, the uh, manifold pressure should go right down to zero and it shouldn't have any difference at all. I did a test flight where I actually read it and I was blown away with what I saw. 45 degrees before top dead center at idle. OAT is 80. All right, full power. Static RPM is 2190. Manifold off goes to 35, goes up to 2220, 2230. Manifold back on goes to 51, drops to 2170 or 80. So I think the uh, 
EIS does need to be adjusted. All right. Airspeed's alive. There's 40. 50. There's 60. 55, and up we go. And gear up. There's a cruise climb. Now I'm going to shut off the manifold. We drop down to 40. From with it on, 57. With it off, down to 40. Let's see if the CHTs come down. Yes, they do. So EIS is definitely needs some adjusting. And look at that. Now my CHTs, with full power, are down where they should be with a manifold shut off, manifold sensor. I have this meter set up here that tells me what the advanced timing is on the EIS and currently it's showing 38 degrees and I also put in a switch so I could turn off the manifold adjustment and when I switch it on you'll see the timing goes to 54 and all of a sudden my CHTs start climbing like crazy my power goes down so I switch it off my CHDs go down. I'm climbing at full power. I'm only at 375 degrees. So obviously, my EIS is not working correctly. The timing is not set correctly. 3144 hotel, contact approach 128.25. By turning off the uh, manifold advance, it's actually caused my airplane to have more power, it's flying faster, and it's running cooler. So. I had two timing problems. One was the EIS, and the other was the uh, magneto. The magneto got fixed at the uh, annual uh, condition inspection, and now I know how to fix the EIS. Again, that is the end of my cooling problems. At idle, the electronic ignition was showing 45 degrees before top dead, top dead center. Way too high. Way, way, way too high. So then I did my run up. You know, static run up. I was getting 2180 RPM static run up. However, with that static uh, RPM uh, at full power on the run up, it was 51 degrees before top dead center. It's astronomical. Should no be nowhere near that high. It should be 20 less than that. You know, maybe 30 at the most. Uh, when I switched off the manifold pressure sensor. I actually gained some RPM, static RPM, that went up to 2230 RPM, and the timing came down to 35. Still a bit too high, I'd like to see more like 32, but 35 is definitely better than 51. So then I did a full power climb. With the manifold pressure sensor turned on, I got 2330 RPM, 57 degrees before top dead center. Just nuts, it was way, way, way too advanced. Uh, my EGT average was 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, and my CHTs were just going skyrocketing. So then I turned off the manifold pressure sensor. Uh, I got 50 RPM, went up to 2370 RPM. The timing went back down to 40 before top dead center, which is pretty close to where I'd want it, probably maybe more like 35. Uh, the EGT went up by 30 degrees, but more importantly, the CHT started coming down. So with it on, I was seeing like 410, and they were still going up. After I turned it off, they came back down and they stabilized at about an average of about 375. And that's during the climb. So obviously the electronic ignition is causing the EGTs to soar because of inappropriately advanced timing. Obviously at 57 degrees, that's just nuts. It's almost the point of causing engine damage at that point. Same thing at cruise, I was at cruise Full power, full rich, uh, 6,500 feet. With the manifold pressure sensor on, I was seeing 2410 RPM, 54 degrees before top dead center. Again, way too high. My EGTs were up. Um, average CHT was stabilized at about 365 degrees. I got a lot of airflow going in, so obviously that helps with that. I turned the manifold pressure sensor off. I went up to 2530 RPM, so I got over 100 RPM, more power being made. The timing went to 38, so instead of 54, came down to 38. Still too high, but we'll deal with that. Uh, my EGT went from 1215 with it on to 1370 with it off. 
Obviously, because now the heat is not being sunk into the, the cylinder head, it's coming out the exhaust. You want to see the EGTs go up, you want to see the CHTs come down. And where I was stabilized at 365 average for CHTs with it turned on, when I turned the manifold pressure off, I stabilized at 330 degrees Fahrenheit, which is amazing considering that I it was usually almost at 400 when I was doing that before. So I've lost 70 degrees Fahrenheit in CHT by having that manifold sensor turned off. So what does that mean? I spent a lot of time last night going over the data. I, I pulled all the data into Savvy Aviation, lined up with what I was seeing with the video that I took, and, and so I knew when things were getting turned on, turned off. And the conclusion I've come to is the manifold air pressure sensor on the EIS is failed. And it's failed open so that whenever it's enabled, it is throwing the full advance. It's, it can do up to 18 or 19 degrees advance additional on top of the base and the, and the RPM map. So it's taking whatever is supposed to be and adding an 18 or 20 degrees no matter what, no matter what the engine speed, which is totally wrong. So I have two options. I can either just disable it, replace it. I think what's going to happen, I'm just going to disable it. It'll still run fine. It'll still have the base map, which works off RPM, and that's fine. Eventually, I'm going to replace this unit because it is pretty old. But the base value is also too high. There is an adjustment in here that I can make so I can lower that base value slightly to bring it down so that I'm seeing 25 at certain RPMs and 30 to certain RPMs, so that, that should be much, much closer to what it should be. That way I'll have the correct advance for almost all situations, including idle, through full power, through climb, through static, through everything, and it gets me more RPM, so I get more power out of the engine. I'll climb faster, engine will run cooler. So that's what I'm gonna do today. I gotta take the cowl apart and to get to that unit so that I can take it apart and get to the adjustment knobs, and I will then also permanently disable that uh, manifold pressure gauge as well. All right, let's get to work. Oh, by the way, the reason you see flashing in here is because I'm, I'm doing the database updates in my avionics, and so I have the master on, and, and I always leave my strobes turned on because it lets me know that I've left my master on, so that's my, my fail safe in case I forget and leave my master on, and it saved me so many times. All right, let's get to work. release. Airspeed alive. There's 50. 60. And a little pressure back. And gear up. And the end result was that the CHT problem was fixed. As you can see, I did a full power climb out and I climbed up to 8,500 feet here and the CHTs never got above 375 at the very, very highest. And that is amazing. And then later in the high speed cruise, I was at about 330 degrees which is just crazy cool for this airplane. So I'm really, really thrilled that this problem is now finally behind me. The engine is running very cool, even on a hot day like this. I hope you like this video and this whole series. If you do, please click like, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.